Monday, 24th of May, 2021. Live from Television Centre in London, this is Good Morning Britain with Charlotte Hawkins. Good morning, Britain. It's six o'clock. We're with you all the way through until nine, with Bill Turnbull joining Susanna from half past six. First, our top story. And our main news this morning is that the BBC must act quickly to restore public trust in the wake of the Martin Bashir panorama scandal, according to the Culture Secretary. Writing in The Times today, Oliver Dowden has accused the broadcaster of a we-know-best attitude, saying it can lead to poor decision-making. Jonathan Swains at BBC Broadcasting House for us this morning with more on this. Good morning, Jonathan. Now, MPs are reportedly planning to question BBC bosses further over this, aren't they? Well, Charlotte, the questions just keep on coming. Yet again, it's going to be another uncomfortable week uh, for the BBC, who find themselves not just reporting on the news, uh, but very much uh, at the centre of it. We understand that a, a committee of MPs are trying to organise a special session whereby they can grill the current bosses of the BBC and also the man in charge at the time, uh, Lord Hall. Well, the deceit and what happened in 1995 isn't just going to stay there in the history books because the government, we understand, are keen to change the way of how the BBC operates because Oliver Dowden, the culture secretary, believes or implies that the corporation has become out of touch with many aspects uh, of the nation and he wants to change the whole culture here. So a scandal like what we saw in 1995 doesn't happen again. This is Margot. Margot. Prince William is in Scotland while the ramifications of that interview engulf the BBC. It's emerged that MPs are set to quiz BBC bosses over the Martin Bashir scandal. Among their raft of questions, why was Bashir rehired by the BBC as religious affairs correspondent, even though his dishonesty was already known? Meanwhile, the culture secretary, Oliver Dowden, has launched a stinging attack on the corporation. Writing in The Times today, Oliver Dowden says the scandal had exposed failures that strike at the heart of our national broadcaster's values and culture. And the BBC needs to improve its culture to ensure this never happens again. His criticism comes after the Home Secretary refused to rule out the possibility of criminal prosecutions. I, I can't think of, uh, of an instance where um, a broadcaster has been prosecuted for offences of dishonesty like this. So it would be, it would be, a, uh, it would be massive, to be frank. Lord Dyson's findings led to this emotional but robust response from Prince William last week. It brings indescribable sadness to know that the BBC's failures contributed significantly to her fear, paranoia and isolation that I remember from those final years with her. But some royal experts claim, far from being paranoid, Imagine Princess Diana knew exactly what she was doing. Bashir was wrong. The, the cover-up was even worse, in my opinion. But that doesn't mean the narrative that Diana was saying at the time in any way is, 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 is weakened because what she said is what she believed and what she wanted to say. Martin Bashir has said he never wanted to harm Princess Diana and is deeply sorry to her sons. The depth of their loss, though, no doubt resurfacing during the last few days. Jonathan Swain, Good Morning Britain. Up to 100,000 people are expected to defy government guidance this week and travel to Spain. The popular holiday destination, which remains on the amber travel list, has told tourists they won't need a, Novid, a negative Covid entry test on entry. Well, it comes as the Prime Minister is reportedly planning to announce that the country is on target to continue lifting lockdown measures with the next major change expected on the 21st of June. Nick Dixon is in Manchester. Good morning to you, Nick. So around 80 flights to Spain expected to take off every day this week. The country being on the amber list doesn't seem to have put people off. No, not at all, um, Charlotte. As you say, despite the fact that the government guidance is very clear right now not to travel to Spain, there are plenty of flight options available all around the country, certainly here at Manchester, but all the major UK airports, uh, Heathrow, Gatwick, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Cardiff, you name it, really. And as much as you will get a warm welcome when you land in Spain, the fact is, as you say, it's on the, the amber list here in the UK. And that means an awful lot of hassle and expense uh, in terms of coming back into the UK. You have to have those two 
COVID tests, not to mention 10 days of quarantine. And for now, the Transport Secretary, Grant Shapps, is making it very clear. And what he's saying to holidaymakers is, look, have some patience and for now stick to the countries on the green list. The draw of a Spanish holiday is proving too strong for tens of thousands of people heading there this week alone. Their government's happy to oblige. Forget European unity. This summer, it's every country for itself. Spain is deeply envious of neighbouring Portugal's place on the green list and it hopes that by dropping all restrictions, it will attract more Brits. Meanwhile, in Madrid, they desperately want Spain to be put on the green list too. This week, Boris Johnson will say that Britain's on track to lift remaining restrictions on June 21st and explain what's known so far about the Indian variant. Despite the Prime Minister's upbeat outlook, new data from Public Health England shows there's been nearly 3,000 cases of the Indian variant in England, with 104 hospitalisations and six deaths. So I think this is a public health emergency. I mean, Public Health England is very clear that the risk to public health is high. This variant is highly transmissible. It's showing evidence of escape. We know that now from the vaccine data. Um, and we know that it's growing twice as fast as the so-called Kent variant. Scotland and Northern Ireland are proceeding with easing restrictions from today. A traffic light system for foreign travel starts for Scots and indoor gatherings can now happen in Northern Ireland. Nick Dixon, Good Morning Britain. Britain has strongly condemned the use of a fighter jet by the Belarusian government to hijack a Ryanair flight and force its diversion. President Lukashenko is accused of staging a bomb threat to intercept the flight from Greece to Lithuania in order to arrest a political opposition activist on board. Our chief correspondent Richard Gaysford is at the Foreign Office with more. Good morning, Richard. There's been a strong response to this already. The international community taking it very seriously. Yes, this is really seen as a very serious and significant international incident. You've got European leaders meeting today. They will have to come up with a strong response to this because an international airline in the form of Ryanair flying on an approved European route through approved airspace brought down to the ground by the country below it issuing a bomb threat and sending up a fighter jet. Uh, this, as you say, on the direct orders of President Alexander Lukashenko. Uh, and uh, he is a man who is facing growing opposition in the country. He has uh, been in power for 26 years, won a sixth term in office uh, last summer. And the target for him was Roman Prozasevich. Uh, he's a Belarusian opposition activist. Uh, and uh, he thought he was safe. He was flying on this route from Athens up to Vilnius in Lithuania. Uh, then, of course, this... Uh, a bomb uh, warning came through, was forced down the plane to Minsk in Belarus, and he now says that his life is in danger. Uh, and there's real concern about the precedent that this is setting. Using bomb scares to divert flights and then using fighters to force uh, civilian aircraft away from the closest runway, which in this case would have been Vilnius, and towards Minsk, really puts hundreds of lives at risk and is an extremely dangerous thing to do, and the actions of a reckless and dangerous regime. Well, the Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, says these were outlandish actions with serious implications. We're just waiting, Charlotte, to find out what the British response in terms of action will be. OK, Richard, thanks very much. Cancer charities warning tens of thousands of men could be missing out on life-saving treatment because of the coronavirus pandemic. Figures shared exclusively with Good Morning Britain from Prostate Cancer UK show a dramatic fall in GP referrals for the disease. Louisa James has the details. Andrew Richardson was told he had prostate cancer last August. I was just sat there working from home like we have been doing from the pandemic on a Tuesday afternoon um, when I got the call. It was caught by a regular blood test. Like many others, he had no major symptoms. I wouldn't have gone to the doctors, you know, uh, last summer, just for feeling tired. My cancer would have gone undetected, and all the time it could have been growing away inside me. Thanks to early diagnosis, Andrew's now been given the all clear. But figures shared exclusively with GMB by Prostate Cancer UK show there were 55,000 fewer referrals for urological cancers in England during the coronavirus pandemic compared to the previous year and an estimated 10,000 fewer diagnoses of prostate cancer. 
we're so worried about it because uh, we know that early diagnosis is is such a key thing for um, driving those those better outcomes for men. So we really want to find those missing men uh, and make sure that they get the best chance for a, a good outcome. Urgent referrals for other cancers are also dramatically down. And Cancer Research UK is now warning the country faces the real possibility of the COVID pandemic being replaced by a cancer crisis. Louisa James, Good Morning Britain. Patients may have to wait until 2024 to get dental appointments, according to a new report into the state of dental care. Dental surgeries say thousands of people are on their waiting lists, with some patients reporting that they felt pressured to pay for private care. Healthwatch England says delays have resulted in the worsening of symptoms and in one case led to a patient needing hospital treatment after overdosing on painkillers. Police have made a further appeal for information following the shooting of a woman in South London. 27-year-old Sasha Johnson, who's a member of the Taking the Initiative party, has been identified by her organisation. The mother of two was shot in the head at around 3am in Peckham and is in hospital with life-threatening injuries. Police have declined to name the victim but have asked for residents to check dash cam and doorbell footage to help the investigation. Now, the American pro golfer Phil Mickelson has become the oldest winner of a major championship. The 50-year-old won his sixth major title in the 103rd US PGA, 16 years after lifting the Wanamaker Trophy for the first time. Mickelson will join the US Open next month, a day after his 51st birthday, which he needs to win to complete the career Grand Slam. Now, 6.11, Alex has the weather details for us. Morning, Alex. I mean, when we think about this time last year, what a difference there is in the weather. It's wet, it's cold at the moment. What's going on? And is there any sunshine in sight? Well, Charlotte, if we had to score the weather, it would be nil point. Uh, it has not been performing as of late. It's been very disappointing. Temperatures have been quite a few degrees uh, below average. And that's really uh, because we've got the jet stream, which is flowing to the south of us, east, uh, to west to east. Uh, and it's basically acting like a conveyor belt at the moment, feeding areas of low pressure, also blocking off that warm air from the near continent. But there is some good news. As we head through the course of this week, it is set to get better. This is the current situation, this area of low pressure, which basically brought more wet and windy conditions for much of the UK uh, in the last 24 hours. Across Scotland, it's going to be lingering there for a good part of the day. But as we head through the course of this week, you'll notice high pressure starts to build in slowly but surely. And as we head towards Friday and Saturday, we're going to see temperatures get a bit of a boost back up to average. Yeah, they should be at around 18 to 20 degrees at the moment. And that's exactly where they're going to be as we head into uh, next weekend, which is a bank holiday weekend as well. As for today, well, rain for Scotland, showers elsewhere, and they are likely to be on the heavy and thundery side at times. On the satellite and radar pitch, you can see a fair few showers already in and out towards western parts at the moment. That's the rain from yesterday, which is going to be quite heavy and persistent across Scotland through much of the day. Uh, probably the best conditions later on this afternoon will be across southwestern parts of Scotland into northern England. Away from here, you can see quite wet at times of showers in the south, maybe merging into longer spells of rain also could turn on the thundery side as well. Temperatures, as you can see, disappointing for this time of year. They are going to be staying below average. As I say, for this time in late May, it should be at around 18 degrees in the north, more like uh, the low 20s in the south. But we will get there a bit later on through the course of this week. Into this evening and overnight, we will start to see these showers gradually easing through these small hours of Tuesday. It's going to take a, a, quite a while, but probably a wet start to the day here first thing tomorrow. And then we're going to see another area of rain pushing from the north and that's going to push south eastwards overnight tonight. Temperatures, lows of six to seven, so no frosty problems. Alex, thanks very much. Now, good morning, Britain's here all the way through till nine. Bill Turnbull is joining Susanna from half past six. And as Spain opens up to allow British holidaymakers from today, the country is still on the UK's amber list. So should you be booking a trip there? We'll be asking the travel expert Simon Calder about that shortly. Also this morning, Peter Andre first found fame singing under a waterfall, but the mysterious girl singer has now found himself dealing with a flood inside his home after a prank on his children went horribly wrong. Well, all the details of that coming up when we speak to him after 8 o'clock this morning. First, let's get the news, travel and weather, where you are. See you in a moment.
let's take a look at the front pages of the newspapers now. And the Times is reporting that the Culture Secretary, Oliver Dowden, has accused the BBC of having a we-know-best attitude following the Martin Bashir scandal. Writing in the paper, he says that the corporation must change to represent all of Britain. The UK reaching the milestone of a third of the population being fully vaccinated against COVID-19 leads the Metro today. The paper says it means the timetable for ending restrictions is now back on track after it was placed in doubt by the more transmissible Indian variant. And Boris Johnson and fiancé Carrie Simons will celebrate their wedding next summer, according to The Sun. The paper claims the pair have sent save-the-date cards to family and friends for a ceremony on the 30th of July next year. So the British government has condemned Belarus after its president was accused of forcing the diversion of a Ryanair flight to arrest a dissident journalist on board. We can take a look at this map that shows the passenger plane was on its way from Greece to Lithuania when it was redirected to land in Minsk. Belarus state media said a fighter jet escorted the plane because of a bomb scare, but no explosives were found. Activists say the arrest of Roman Protezovich was an act of state terrorism. Travel expert Simon Calder joins me now with more details on this. Good morning to you, Simon. Um, I mean, what do you make of this? Because we've heard Dominic Raab, the Foreign Secretary here, speak out to say it's an outlandish action. It's going to have serious implications. What do you think the consequences will be? Yes, we have never, ever seen anything like this. I've been covering aviation for decades. And the idea that a government of a country would make a false claim of a hijack and then command the pilots not to go to straight to the nearest airport, which they were going to land at anyway, Vilnius, just 60 miles north, but as your map shows, actually divert 100 miles east with a little bit of friendly persuasion in the shape of a MiG-29 fighter. It is off the scale in international civil aviation. There, there is absolute uh, seriousness about doing nothing which is going to disturb um, the, the, an ordinary flight like this and increase risk for passengers. Um, and yet Belarus went ahead, apparently, and did this. So the, in, the, the reaction was instant. The International Civil Aviation Organization said this is utterly utterly reprehensible and European Union uh, bosses will be meeting today to decide, I imagine, that they are going to close Belarus airspace to uh, all European airlines. Uh, the UK will almost certainly follow suit. And on top of that, Belavia, the Belarus national airline, I'm pretty sure, will be banned from flying anywhere for a while. Um, clearly, there's a lot of investigation to go on here, but uh, the, the story has just astonished and appalled everybody in passenger aviation. Yeah, and I was going to say, you know, how worried should passengers be then about something like this happening? But it, it sounds like, you know, this could be averted for the time being, at least if firm action is going to be taken to close the airspace. Yeah, I mean, this is a complete one off the uh, pilots, of course, Ryanair being the safest airline in the world in terms of passengers flown um, without a fatality. They responded perfectly professionally in what must have been really quite stressful circumstances. So I have no worries about flying. But the fact that a, a country in Europe could actually perpetrate something like this is simply astonishing for what appear to be uh, purely political aims. And so, therefore, Belarus will will face um, sanctions, not just, I suspect, in aviation, but more widely, because you know, ordinary passengers get on a flight, they expect to be flown safely from A to B. In this case, Athens to Vilnius, they do not expect to find themselves caught up in some kind of Cold War uh, emergency. It's, it's terrifying for them, um, desperate, of course, for the uh, uh, dissident journalist on board, and uh, just a, an appalling um, use of an ordinary passenger plane for political purposes. OK, we've also got to talk about the situation with Spain. They have said that tourists don't need a negative test on entry. Now, it is still on the UK's amber list. We've been running this Twitter poll that where we asked, should holidays to Spain be banned? 67% of people who responded said yes, they should be banned. 33% said no. However, we do know that there are going to be, what, thousands of people who will be setting off to Spain this week because of what's happened here, although it is supposed to be only essential travel at the moment. 
No, well, it, uh, the, yes, Charlotte, you're absolutely right that, that that's what the government is saying. However, it's exactly a week since they lifted the ban on all overseas travel. They said, effectively, we have had this ban in place for 19 weeks. Now you can go anywhere you want to. That was the effect of lifting the travel ban. They then rode back on it and said, oh, well, of course, when we said you can go anywhere, we meant only for essential purposes if it's on the amber or red list. But of course, as well as the fact that uh, Spain has kind of really raised the stakes in the uh, um, European poker uh, game to attract British holidaymakers, they've said you don't need any jabs. You don't need to have a test. All you need is to fill in this fairly straightforward um, form and get a QR code, as opposed to Portugal, which says you've got to have a, P uh, a PCR test. Greece, which says um, you either have a uh, test or you prove that you have been jabbed. Um, Spain is going ahead. They are confident that certainly by the end of June, all or most of the country, including the uh, Balearic and Canary Islands, will be on the green list. For now, anybody who's going there is clearly going against government advice. If you're going to the Canaries, your travel insurance will still be valid because, astonishingly, the Foreign Office doesn't warn against travel to there. But whatever happens, you've still got to have multiple tests to come back into the UK and, of course, self-isolate when you do. All right. Well, thanks for clearing that up for us. That's Simon Calder there, travel expert. Thanks for joining us this morning. Now, Will Njovu is here with the latest entertainment news. Good morning to you. I mean, it's been a big weekend, hasn't it? Uh, Music-wise, lots going on. Not all of it has gone the way we would have wanted. <laughs> exactly. <better say. laughs> That's right, Charlotte. And I'm excited to be blinded by the light as the Billboard Music Awards were back with a bang. Hosted by Nick Jonas and following COVID the protocol, the ceremony music. took place in LA last night or in the early hours of the morning for us. And it was a huge night for music artists all over the world. The big winner of the evening was The weekend who took home not one, not three, not eight, but ten awards. He had this message to share with his fans. I want to thank my fans, of course. You guys make me want to do this forever. I love you so much. And I just want to say um, the after hours are done and the dawn is coming. Thank you. Hold up. What could that mean, Charlotte? Like... Sounds like, smells like a new album, possibly. It maybe does, doesn't it? That's what Something's we need. Coming that up. is exactly what we need. <laughs> Plus, there were some great performances, too, from the likes of South Korean pop band BTS, who celebrated four wins, including top group and top selling song. They debuted their new single, Butter, live from South Korea. And pop royalty collided as Bon Jovi presented Pink, the accolade of Icon of the Year. She treated fans to a mashup of performances of her classics, including the fist pumping So What, old school track Who Knew, and the haunting love melody Just Give Me a Reason. But it was her children who actually stole the show, joining her on stage with daughter Willow, stunning audiences as she matched her mum move by move with an aerial performance of Cover Me in Sunshine. With nine number one albums, Drake was the obvious winner um, of the Artist of the Decade Award. The Canadian rapper was presented with this award by his family and friends and delivered a humble acceptance speech of disbelief, much to the dismay of his young son, Adonis, who joined him on stage. It was all very cute, by the way. Uh, and flying the flag for the UK was Duran Duran, who proved they can still hang with the cool kids after a career spanning four decades. They rocked out remotely from the UK due to COVID travel restrictions, performing classic track Hungry Like the Wolf and uh, something a bit more recent, Invincible. Elsewhere in the world of entertainment, it was the one we were all waiting for, but actually left us all a bit oh, disappointed. No. Did we have to see this again? It was so sad, <laughs> so embarrassing, actually. The grand finale of Eurovision took place on Saturday, and our boy James Newman flew the flag for the UK with his entry embers. But sadly, it was not enough fire to secure the win, scoring an embarrassing, you heard me, an embarrassing <laughs> nil poire. Charlotte, sorry. Sorry, it was just so embarrassing. I know, like, but we were always going to Not even that, one we? We, point. That was always going to happen. We should have prepared ourselves. Honestly <laughs> speaking. But you know what? He did his best, but he was upstaged by the metal Italian group Maniskin, uh, a warning that his performance contains flashing images. Italy beat France to the trophy, uh, receiving a whopping 524 points. Their PVC get-ups may have helped sway that popular vote, though. <laughs> Although it was disappointing um, for the UK entry this year, um, 
all is not lost as a few unlikely heroes have offered their services for 2022, including comedian and Strictly champ Bill Bailey, who tweeted, I'd be happy to throw my hat in the, in the hash for... Um, I'd be happy to throw my hat in the ring for hashtag Eurovision 2022. And not, not want to shy away from the camera is our man, our friend, Big Nasty. He told Radio 2 that he wants to get on board, even suggesting roping in his pal Ed Sheeran. Now, do you know what? I've been thinking about this a lot, actually. I think they could join forces and form a supergroup, a big supergroup for Eurovision 2022. I've even thought, actually, Charlotte, about how it may look. Yeah, as well. okay. Allow me to introduce you to Nasty Boys. Could this be the answer to success in 2022? What do you reckon, Charlotte? I think you might be onto something. Yeah, there. yeah, I mean, yeah, we, yeah. Let's face it, we've got nothing to lose, have we? Well, at least we can get one point. <laughs> we couldn't one. get any worse, could we? <laughs> well, great to see you. Thanks Thank so much you. for running us through all of that. Well, coming up next, Bill and Susanna will be here in just a moment. And saving lives by speaking out. We meet the man who got himself checked for prostate cancer during the pandemic and received an early diagnosis, life-saving surgery, and is now in the clear. Well, he wants thousands of men who've skipped appointments to speak to their GP. Plus, Gary Barlow told him to get back in the studio and he's been recording with Ricky Wilson. Peter Andre's here after 8 o'clock to tell us how his famous friends got him singing again. That's all coming up, but let's find out what's happening with the weather now. Alex has got all the details for you. Well, everyone, it's lightning. Proud sponsors of Good Morning Britain National Weather, Boxed Boilers. Hello, a very good morning to you. It certainly has been a very disappointing few days. Wet and windy conditions across much of the UK yet again yesterday. That was all thanks to this area of low pressure, which is still uh, centred to the north of the UK. So for Scotland, it's going to be a pretty dismal day with further outbreaks of rain and some fairly strong winds at times. And you can see the conditions across the south, not much better. Temperatures, as you can see, below par for the time of year. But there is some good news. As we head through the course of this week, we are going to see high pressure starting to establish itself across the UK. So temperatures are set to return to average for the time of year. So that means 18 degrees in the north, more like 20 across the south. Could get a little bit warmer as we head into the bank holiday weekend. Yes, a bank holiday weekend to look forward to with some decent weather on the cards. As for today, as I say, rain across Scotland, showers elsewhere, and some of those showers are likely to turn on the thundery side out towards the west. These will start to push their way eastwards as we head through the course of the day. And those showers are likely to perhaps merge into longer spells of rain. So we'll probably see a drop in temperature whilst those showers are around. So a disappointing feel out there. The best of the conditions today will be across northern England into southwest Scotland, where it's going to be largely on the dry side. But as I say, temperatures across the board are going to be below average. Heading into this evening, we start to see these showers gradually ease and push their way further southeast. Behind it, though, we see another area of uh, showery rain coming through. So, again, another fairly damp night in places. Temperatures are going to be high enough for most parts to escape a frost, certainly where it stays dry and clear. Heading into tomorrow, we can, can see what the picture is really we're going to see a real mix of sunshine and showers so keep your brolly handy and those temperatures may be a touch better but still below average for the time of year but as i say maybe 2021 20, as we head into the bank holiday weekend that's your forecast for the weather in detail where you are go to itv.com forward slash weather